Welcome to this drift through Butte Town, which is situated in Cardiff, South Wales, and is in close proximity to the famous Cardiff Bay. We hope to show in this presentation where the boundaries of Butte Town lie in respect to the rapidly developing adjacent areas such as Cardiff Bay and the city centre, in asking the question of Has the evolution of Cardiff over the last two centuries left distinct boundaries in the Butte Town area? To understand this in more detail, it is important to realise the heritage of Cardiff and what role Butte Town played in its success. The key milestone occurred at the end of the 18th century, in 1794, when Gl the Glamorganshire Canal was completed linking Cardiff and Merthyr together, and establishing Cardiff as a worldwide exporter of coal and iron. Until the late 1800s, Butte Town was a bar in Moorland, until a second Marcus of Butte decided to build the first dock in Cardiff. Following the opening of West Butte Dock in 1839, John Crichton Stewart became the third Marcus of Butte, who continued his father's dream of making Butte Town a respectable middle-class suburb the houses mainly occupied by sea captains and merchants. Unfortunately, during the decline of the coal exports in the late 1930s, Butte Town, which now had an unsustainable population, began to suffer from the effects of mass unemployment. As a result, the wealthier of its inhabitants moved to the more respectable suburbs of Cardiff, and in their place arose the first multi-ethnic community formed by people from all over the world, commonly known as Tiger Bay. As Sinclair explains, walking is the best way to explore and exploit the city. Therefore, we walked through the Butte Town area, going into the heart of the neighbourhood and along what felt like natural boundaries of the area. In doing so, we were trying to gain a better understanding of what the differences were in the adjacent regions and distinguish where the boundaries of Butte Town seemed to start and finish. We begin our journey at Cardiff Bay train station, located at the edge of Butte Town. The movement of cars shows that the area is used more as a thoroughfare than as a place to stop, highlighted by the number 7 bus which is destined for Cardiff Bay, yet there is a feeling of reluctance to stop in the area. Hemingway Road seems to give an initial idea of being the edge of a boundary that divides Butte Street through a set of traffic lights. They unintentionally act as a physical stopping point, highlighting the end of Butte Town and the beginning of Cardiff Bay development. A stone wall runs adjacent to the railway lines, acting very much as a physical barrier. Subsequently, the area feels enclosed and hemmed in, almost claustrophobic at this point, Yet there is a tree line that attempts to soften the immediate feeling of the boundary. There are specific bays for parking on the edge of Butte Street that allow the continual fluidity of cars through Butte Town to the bay, showing Butte Street's role is more of a thoroughfare and access road to Cardiff Bay and the city, rather than a stopping point for Butte Town. This presents a clear boundary in itself that is highlighted through the presence of bus stop in Butte Town that gives residents a small feeling of inclusion into society. Heading north along Butte Street, there are great boundaries and divisions of the use of land. For example, on the left hand side, there is a plot that one can only describe as no man's land, which is untended, wild, and looks over from both sides, yet unclaimed. The feeling of being hemmed in really hits home with the tops of the chic estates surrounding, popping over and looking down, almost like that of a king above and the people below. As we venture deeper into Butte Town, we start to see the great diversity this area is famous for. It was previously known as Tiger Bay because of its multicultural society at the outbreak of World War I, and such presence is still visible today. With a population of 4,487 from the 2001 census data, there were 18.81% black or mixed people, 9.46% Asian, and 4.1% Chinese. This multicultural and accepting society is reflected in the buildings we see, such as a mosque just off Butte Street, illustrating acceptance and lack of boundaries within Butte Town. Upon the boards and divisions of development, the residents have expressed their emotion through the use of graffiti, reminding people of the history of the area, the coal miners, pirates, monks and fishermen from the maritime past, showing a clear division and boundary of historic and modernistic development. London Square at the centre of Butte Street illustrates there is a lack of large commercial chains such as co-op and M&S present. Instead, privately owned businesses run for and by members of the community which shows a sense of belonging and cohesion, supported through the introduction of a new Yemeni youth centre advertised in one of the shop windows. Yet such clear differences of community spirit evoke a feeling of dissimilarity and ultimately boundaries to the shopping centres such as St David's and Cardiff Bay just half a mile away. We asked a local resident if he feels sidelined from the new developments which are rising up around the surrounding area to Butte Town. He replied, They've been building all around us and I get the impression we are stuck here like an eyesore in the landscape. 
Ultimately, I feel like the boundaries seem to be closing in on this area, creating a clear-cut divisions between surrounding communities. Within Butetown, it is quite clear that there are divisions. The newer housing which has popped up is very different to the older high-rise which was evolved. We pass a clear boundary within the estate, Angelina Street, which gives the impression of breaking apart two sides. One with housing that could almost be that of a businessman in an estate on the suburbs, and the other with dark, dingy and small terraced houses. This could initially be seen as a break within the community and a boundary in its own right. However, there still seems to be a feeling of cohesion here and between the residents. Finally, we break out from the thin line of housing, the remnants of Butte Town, and arrive upon a green playing field, which acts as a barrier with the, with the pavement, and the metal fencing preventing the people from simply running onto the grass and using it. A metal sharp poised fence runs along the whole length of the field, acting as a deterrent for those who will perform anti-social acts, but also it is a clear boundary which stops the extension of the Butte Town Estates. The people seem to be dictated in no uncertain terms where they must not go and where they can go. The walls and fences act as a stop sign, a psychological and physical no-go. Looking back over Butte Town Estate, there are clear divisions of housing, more contemporary developments encroaching into the estate with modern paraphernalia such as water heating panels on the roof and access to gardens compared to those in the high-rise council type apartments illustrating that there seem to be clear divisions of where Butte Town Estate lies. As we leave, trees placed across the green for aesthetic pleasure mark a gateway and a boundary out of the estate, acting like markers for the occupants of Butte Town, a reminder of who they are and where they are heading. The accommodation is higher class than the Butte Town Estate, but nevertheless it seems to be encroaching into its boundaries. Walking down the road, Towards the seafront, you become aware of a change in the pavement's appearance from the industrial council estate areas, where the pavements are formed from slab concrete, therefore dull and boring, compared to the area of new development which provides pavements with red paving tiles. The change in appearance is drastic and creates a much nicer environment. The industry located in the area of new development is low income and dirty, such as mechanics, welding, and steelworks. Totally contrasts the housing across the road and the employees of these industries do not live and cannot afford to live in this type of housing. One of the workers explained this and told us, as people can't live there, it's the office workers who work in the city that live there. They go to work in posh suits and I go to work in overalls covered in oil and grease. They're not our people. The area of new development is separated from the council estate by an area of open space, 50 metres in width. The boundary, shown by a grass is greener on the other side metaphor. The new development, Century Wharf, is a gated community, yet again causing physical, social and visual boundaries, blocking out the surrounding neighbourhoods, or more importantly the inhabitants of the council estate. There really is a feeling around this area that the community living in the new development want to have nothing to do with or have no link with the Boot Town Council Estate. Graffiti displayed on the walls of Boot Town's youth centre highlights the desires of, young, of the young community within the Boot Town Estate. An image shows a bike under repair with one adjacent saying equal opportunities. It implies that these youngsters want to learn the skills to progress them onto better opportunities, but the chances are just not available. <laughs>